Hey, I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm John P. You remember when Chevy loaned us two volts for a couple weeks? We only drove the volts while we had them so we could see exactly what it was like to live with them. The challenge was simple. Could we drive for two whole weeks without using any gas? Well, let's go outside and see what it was like. Warning, it was windy and bright out there. Welcome to Geek Beat. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Domain.com. Okay, I know the big question on everybody's mind before we even get into the details here is, should I buy a Volt? So let's talk about first who should not buy a Volt. First of all, anyone who wants to fit five people in the car at the same time. You only get four. Guys who want to pick up hot chicks. Anybody who drives over 50 miles per day on their daily commute to work and doesn't have a charging station at work. Oil industry executives. Landscapers. So who should buy a Chevy Volt? Well, first of all, urban dwellers who have lots of short little daily commutes, they can get one of these. Yeah, like me. Perfect for me. Anybody who has enough cloud at work to be able to get their boss to install a 220 volt hookup at work. That would be good. Yes. That would be good. <laughs> you can get a lot of clowns in one of these. I'm sure of it. And anyone who hates the sound of the engine roaring while they're trying to talk on the phone. What? What? What'd you say? I can't hear you because the engine's so loud. You know you're not supposed to be talking while you're driving, right? As you can see, the design is very modern, very aerodynamic, and they've incorporated a lot of little features like the side view mirror with the blinker that you see in higher end cars. Now, the gas tank is right here, like on a normal car. I've only used about half a gallon. How about you, John? Well, I haven't been quite that lucky, although I have primarily used electric. Now, on the front here, you've got another button inside that pops open the electric door. And as Callie's demonstrating, you're just going to plug in and charge it up. Now it'll charge on 110, but it'll take about 10 to 12 hours to do that. Or if you've got a 220, as you were talking about earlier, it only takes three or four hours. So really, if, you, if you've got the ability to charge it at home on 220, and then if you can get your boss to put a 220 in at work, you've got it made. We'll talk about range and stuff like that later. Absolutely. Um, one other little design element that I wanted to point out that that's a slight annoyance I think we both encountered. Yes. Right down underneath this front spoiler, there's a little rubber strip here. And I'm sure that's for aerodynamic purposes, but what you'll find is it's so low, there's only two or three inches of ground clearance. It'll drag across the pavement and make some noise. Okay, so let's uh, let's get inside, take them for a Absolutely. drive, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about the features there. As we turn the temperature down, you're actually using basically a capacitive touch screen that is the center console. Indeed we are. And you know, that's like, it's, I would say that's one of my least favorite things about this car. It's funny because it was the most interesting thing to me right when they first announced the Chevy Volt. It's cool, it's techy, but it's also a little hard to use. Um, they're not actually intuitive and I can easily graze uh, the wrong button by accident. So, uh, also there's a lot of buttons. It's, a, it's pretty busy. Now there's, the there car are. does a lot of stuff. Yeah, and so part of it is just getting used to it like any other car that you, that you wind up with. Um, but yeah, you got like to figure out where all your buttons down are. down here and it's a little difficult to find at first. But once you get used to that, my only issue was accidentally hitting something I didn't mean to hit. But the touch panel display is actually really good. I like that. This touch panel works well. I will tell you one thing that is a little bit of an, a little bit of an annoyance to me. Okay, let's say we have the radio on. Okay, we're listening to watercolors. That's my favorite station, by the way. Sirius XM, right? Sirius Jazz, watercolors. Okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm so, a little distracted. We're listening to watercolors. We also have navigation on. Yes. Now let's say my cell phone rings because obviously we're trying to go for as many distractions as we possibly can at once, right? <laughs> I don't think Chevy would approve. Right, well, what's gonna happen is my cell phone rings like, oh wait, I need to answer the phone. Let me just turn off the radio. You hit that to turn off the radio. It turns everything off. There went my nav. Right. Now that's an annoyance, they need yeah. to fix that. Yeah, I noticed that as well. You know, once you find your climate, you can adjust it. You've got eco and you've got comfort, and that is, of course, a feature of this being an electric vehicle. So see, it says it's 28%. That's like somehow how much battery it's using. 
uh, or how much power it's consuming. When you put on comfort, you see it jumped to 43, right. 45. I, so I it, used 47. comfort most of the time, but I didn't have to worry about traveling too far. That's if true. I was traveling farther, I would put it on eco mode to save battery. Well, what I ended up doing was I would hit comfort when I got in the car. Oh, just to get it give To it get a it boost. going. And then once it got to a relatively comfortable state like it is right now, I'll just hit economy. Right. And then, that, and it also is so much quieter. You notice one It thing, really is a lot quieter. I think it was the first night I had the Volt, I wound up going to Payway. Oh yeah. With, so I had Chinese food, right? Yep. And I came out with my- Your take home. home. And um, it and fits perfectly right in here. Right down right? in here, right in there. And yeah. I actually posted a picture on Google Plus. It's perfect for that. There's also this awesome little cubby hole back here. I usually use for my sunglasses or little extra. This stuff thing here has and there. a lot of storage. And there's one, there's up one up here. here. Yeah, yeah. And there's a 12 volt. There's a 12 volt, so you can put a you can put your uh, cell phone in there. And, and then of course the, the glove compartment. Glove box compartment is, is on the smaller side, but you don't. And really the doors, need. the doors have yes. their they we have their key. little storage We've got our space keys in here. <laughs> also in the back between the two rear seats, there's a little what do you what would you call that little storage box area there? Yeah. It's not covered, but it also that one has a 12 volt. Yeah, it's got a 12 volt as well. So if you have somebody in the back who's got a cell phone and they need it powered, you could you know power it back there as and well. This thing actually holds quite a bit in the trunk space. It's cavernous. <laughs> so. You can actually you can see back there where we've got the uh, the camera rigged up, uh, providing that rear view and getting our microphone. Hi. Now with the battery, um, we're getting on average about 30. Uh, miles for each charge. I think we both got that pretty consistently even though we have different driving styles. When you first start, when we look at the dashboard here, uh, uh, right now what we're seeing is um, there's, a, there's a little battery and it says 12 miles remaining on it. Uh, when you first start up the car, it says, you know, how many miles and like you're saying, it might say 30. Right. And then as soon as you get in the car and start driving, it might drop to 25 or yes. 26 very quickly. And right. you're like, I didn't go four or five miles. But what I've also noticed is if you note the starting and ending mileage, uh, it fluctuates a lot in the little meter here, but you still end up going about 30 miles. Right. Now, one of the other things too, is you see that little, that little button ball thing on the right. If I s step on it really fast, or if I step on the brakes, it you see it's like moving. It is like a video game. It's seriously, driving this car is like a video game. You want to- You want to keep um, it right in the middle. You want to keep it right in the middle. You want to beat the ball, essentially. That's right. It gives you the best gas mileage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the whole point of it, but it's also fun. Yeah. Although I found that after, you know, at the end of the two weeks, I kind of started to ignore it. Did you really? Yeah, you didn't care so much. Well, cause I knew I wasn't going to hit my gas. I, I knew I wasn't going to run out of battery. I got used to my patterns right. and I felt okay spending a little extra energy. Yeah. All right, before John shows you one of his favorite features of the Chevy Volt, we need to thank the people who make it possible for us to share cool things like this. Listen, if you get a Volt and you decide you love it so much that you want to share your love with the whole world, the whole world. head on over to domain.com and grab the domain voltlove.com. Yeah, it's available and so are hundreds of others. Either way, we wanna know what domain names you registered this month. Getting a name from domain.com is a smooth, hassle-free process with none of those annoying offers and unnecessary <laughs> stuff. Use coupon code Cali to get 15% off, and if you go to domain.com slash Cali, you'll get a free two gig flash drive. Code Cali. I like free. Okay, we're gonna pull over for just a second because I wanna show everybody something kind of cool. Okay, what's that? I've got an iPod. Yes. So if you look down here in the armrest, okay, right here, there's a USB connector. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna plug in the USB. Okay, iPod's gonna turn on. And look, it automatically switches over to the iPod and begins playing it. Nice. Turn oh, it on. well, let's show people how to turn it on, right? So okay. <laughs> we've got the keys. I think you have them in your pocket. You yes. got a little key fob. So all you do is you get in, you got to put your foot on the brake and you hit the power button. There you go. It's turned on. And you get that little sound. It, it gives you a little and sound. So to it did our indeed. Question, it does play the iPod directly. Plays the iPod. It goes straight back uh, to the iPod. Whoa! whoa. 
<laughs> I had cranked it up before. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to unplug the iPod. Okay, that's unplugged. USB, USB device, device disconnected. disconnected. And guess what? It went right back to watercolors, nice. which is nice. Okay. Here, let me tell you how you can maximize your range. What you need to do is when you're accelerating, you need to accelerate like your, your grandmother. Right. <laughs> okay. Remember that little ball right there. Okay. What we have to do is if you give it too much gas, okay, that ball is going to move up. You see how it moves? Oh, we don't want that. No, no. we want it to be nice and green with the leaves on it. That's right. I'm calling them leaves. The leaves. <laughs> um, but and then breaking, oh, it's hard to break without it coming out of the ball. I mean, yeah, you no, basically, you're, you're always going to, but you, you basically need to coast to a stop in order to be efficient. According to this thing, I'm just going to really give it the juice. Are you ready? Uh, Are you I'm ready not for ready because there's a red light right up ahead. That's okay. We're not going to go too far, but <laughs> okay. we're going to, we're going to give it a little bit. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. So right off the bat. You know, I do love how I don't feel hindered. If I need to pull out in front of a car, you know, timing wise or whatever, I, I get that oomph, I get that go. Yeah, the reason why is because this car has electric motors. It yeah. has torque, mm -hmm. which is that low end uh, pull right off the, off the bat. Right. You know, it's got a lot of torque, so you feel like you're going fast. Yes. Now it doesn't have a huge amount of horsepower. It has 150 horsepower, so that limits your top, top end speed. Which I hear someone has actually hit. Somebody might have tested that. I, <laughs> if there's any law enforcement officials watching right now, I wouldn't know anything about it. But it has been alleged that I might have gone top <laughs> speed in this car. There may be a photograph somewhere that demonstrates said uh, property. But And that would be his Google Plus page. <sighs> <laughs> Did you read the owner's manual? Of course not. I just play with gadgets until I figure them out. You should know that about me by now. When it comes to cars, I actually read the owner's manual. You, you read every owner's manual. Well, what are you Not every about? owner's manual, but I definitely read the car <laughs> owner's manuals. And uh, so you learn some cool things about it. Number one, this, D, this uh, CD slot here is also a DVD slot. And if you stick a DVD in there, you can watch a DVD movie right here in the car. Nice. Only when it's stopped though, Only correct? when it's stopped. Okay. Until somebody figures out how to hack that. <laughs> so, Assignment. <laughs> yeah, that'll be pretty cool. What are the goodies? One of the, one of the main questions I get about um, this car online is what the difference is exactly between this and other electric vehicles. How it, how it works differently. Well, you know, d electric vehicles come in different uh, shapes and sizes, I guess. You've got pure electrics mm -hmm. like the Nissan Leaf. And all that car has is an electric motor and a battery. And if you run out, then you're screwed. If you run out, you call, uh, you know, tow truck I or something, I, I guess. I honestly cannot imagine living like that. Well, I mean, it depends on what your daily drive is like, doesn't it? I mean, a Nissan Leaf will go something like 80 miles, let's say. Okay. Okay, well, 80 but, miles is if this, you live in an urban environment and you never drive more than five or 10 miles in a given, you sure. know, uh, day, you know, or, or trip. I mean, yeah, you, but that's, what happens if all of a sudden you get spontaneous and decide to drive to the movie theater that's, you know, past your limit? You don't. <laughs> See? That is a problem. And then that has to be a decision on the buyer. That's right. That's one kind is yes. a pure electric. Then you've got the hybrid, which is a, an electric assist on a gas motor. Like a lot a of, a lot of cars work like this. A Prius does other GM vehicles, um, like the big Tahoe's you can get a, a hybrid, uh, motor with a large SUV. And so it's got a small electric motor that provides assistance. So when you come to a full stop, that small electric motor will be what's used to take you from a stop to, you know, maybe 20 miles an hour, at wi after which time the gas engine will kick in. Now this car is fairly unique because it does something no other car does. You drive on pure electric mode all the time. I mean, we could be going 100 miles an hour, theoretically, <laughs> and be in electric mode, okay? Right. But what happens is at certain points, the gas motor turns in and it uh, turns on and it provides some assistance as well. So there's actually direct drive from the gas motor to the, to the drivetrain. I mean, the now gas motor- providing ga The gas motor is providing assistance even when you're on battery. 
Is no, that when, what you're saying? when you're well, when you're running on battery, the gas motor does nothing. nothing. Okay. Well, that's not entirely true. <laughs> Sometimes the gas engine will turn on for certain things. Like if the battery needs to be warmed up, it circulates fluid through the battery to keep it nice and cool. Okay. Or I mean, to keep it warm or to keep it cool, it can regulate the temperature. So sometimes the engine may turn on for that purpose. But the engine doesn't have to turn on is the point when you're driving. But after you exhaust the battery fully, now the engine turns on and now the engine is powering the car and other cars don't do that. Okay. So you, you normally would have the engine act as an alternator and charge the battery and then be only on battery. But in this car, the battery and the gas engine, they switch back and yes. forth, which is interesting. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed my experience with the Volt. I, it's a very geeky car. You, you can't deny that for sure. And uh, I've had fun with it. There are those minor things that we talked about that um, are uh, a little frustrating yeah. on the user experience. Of course, every car has its And its And things. remember, this is the first time this exactly. has been this built. First okay, one. first Yeah, first generation. It's great for a generation oh, one vehicle. It's awesome. It's going to only get better generation two, generation three, when it gets more computing power, more customization, you know, potentially things like that. You had good results too with your gas mileage. Yes, I did. It looks like you had, you used Less point, than a gallon. Point six right gallons that. and you've gone 293 miles as of this moment. So you're averaging over 250 miles a gallon. <laughs> That's How'd a lot. You do, John? I didn't do that great. We'll have to take a look. But mine is I got around 500 miles. I traveled, traveled around 500 miles because okay. I have a much longer daily commute you than do. you do. And I also took some longer trips. Like I drove from Dallas over to Fort Worth, which is 50 miles one way. Right. So when you do that, obviously you're gonna exhaust your full 30 miles and then go straight onto gas and be on gas for the rest of the day. Uh, but the I most used- The I ever drove in one trip was 30 miles. Oh yeah. So. So I drove a hundred miles round trip in a period of a couple of hours. Yeah. And that, you know, ended up using a little gas. But even with my more aggressive driving style, my longer commute, et cetera, I've gone 500 miles. I used about five and a half gallons. That's so not bad I'm still at all. averaging almost 90 miles a gallon. So it can be a good option for somebody who is driving quite a bit because you're still saving a lot of money in gas. Well, yeah, let's think about the math here, okay? How much money are you actually saving in gas, okay? So you've gone, let's say, 300 miles. That's about one tank on your car. Right. What, what do you normally pay to fill up your car? Uh, 45 What's, bucks. 45 bucks. And how often do you typically have to do that? Once every week or two? Oh, uh, yeah, about a week and a half to two weeks. Okay, so 45 bucks, let's just call it 50, yeah. okay? And let's say that it's, you know, twice a month. That's a hundred bucks a month you're going to exactly. save. That's not exactly enough to, to justify the purchase of a new car. No, <laughs> I, I wouldn't do it just for that purpose, right. no. But if you are already buying a car and you are already looking at the uh, electric vehicle. Then what you market, could say is, you know, you could afford to spend an extra hundred dollars a month on this car and still be break even versus a car that would be yes. buying gas. That's the way I would look at this, this particular, inter, you know, purchase from an energy consumption standpoint. That's a, that's a good, uh, good outlook. Well, that is a lot of info to digest, but we told you we'd make sure you got the full experience right along with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much to our friends at Chevy for the loaners, and thanks to you guys for watching. If there are any products, big or small, that you want us to try before you buy, just let us know. At John Pose on Twitter, John P on Google+. Callie Lewis on Google+, and Twitter. Bye, Bye. guys.